Hey everyone, so today we're going to do a tree problem and we're going to test if a binary tree is a binary search tree. So we're going to be testing whether all of the nodes in the tree are in order. Or in other words, we're going to test if all of the nodes to the right of a given parent node are greater than that node and all of the nodes to the left of a pa given parent are less than or equal to that parent node. So. To, let's get right into it and first we want to ask any questions we have of our interviewer so two questions come to mind here the first is what are the values that are going to be in this tree so are they going to be integers are they going to be strings are they going to be floats or are they going to be something completely different we don't really know so we want to make sure that we clarify with that before we implement anything so in this case let's say that our interviewer tells us just to do integers any in this case it really doesn't matter any numeric value should be easy because it's easy to compare them if they want us to do strings, it's a little more complicated because we have to figure out how they want us to be comparing the strings, like which string is greater than the other string. But you could do that too. If, they, if that's what they want, you just need to clarify more. And then the other question is, how are we going to treat duplicate values in our tree? So if we have two fives in our tree, for example, or two nodes with the value of five, does the one node go to the right or to the left of the parent? And in this case, we're going to imagine that we want the, if they're the same, the proper way to do it is for the same value to be to the left of the parent. So if there's a five and then there's another five to the, uh, in the right child, then that would be invalid. So let's go ahead and get started. So I, let me, I'm going to copy paste this in because it's a, a sort of a pain for me to type it out. But here we have a sample, just a little binary search tree. And this is a, a proper tree. This is a valid tree because you can see that everything to the right of the five is greater than five and everything to the left of the five is less than five. And as we were talking about earlier, a tree like this would be valid. So if we put a five here, that would be valid, although we'd have to remove this. But something like that would be valid, but, and let me just undo that, but something like this would not be valid because the, we need that the child to be, if the child is the same, then it needs to be the left. So, okay, that's fine. And so we want to think about an algorithm for how to solve this. And so a uh, basic way we could do this is just traverse the tree and we can say for each node, is it less than or greater than the parent node given its position? If it's on the right, is it greater than the parent node? And if it's on the left, is it less than the parent node? And that works and that's for the most part. And that's a good solution and that's a good place to start. Except imagine a case like this. If I replace this six with a four, now all of a sudden this method works right because we have five and so seven is greater than five and four is less than seven so that's fine and that's valid in this algorithm except that's not actually valid because this should be on the other side of the tree this should be uh somewhere in here this should be like four here and then maybe this four would have a child that would be three on the left but so we need to be able to actually check for this. And so what I'm thinking of doing is we can check, we can traverse the tree like we were going to, but we just need to establish bounds because we know, and I'm gonna, let me just copy this in here. We know that everything on this side of the tree is on the right side of the tree is always going to be greater than five and everything on the left side of the tree is always going to be less than five. So we can imagine this, there's sort of this, line in the middle here is marking like a minimum for the right hand side of the tree for any value on the right hand side of the tree and a maximum for any value on the left hand side of the tree so if we keep track if we do our if we traverse the tree but we keep track of the maximum and the minimum and then in this case you know the maximum is somewhere the maximum value here is like infinity or the max int value and so we can basically say that all of our values on this side of the tree have to be somewhere between these two values they have to be between five and infinite infinity and then in this case we can draw another little divider here like so and now for this this value we know that it has to be between five and between seven so basically every time we go right 
we're going to use that parent as the new minimum value. And every time we go left, we're going to use that parent as the new maximum value. And we can do this recursively fairly easily, right? Because we're just going to go traverse down through the tree. And so we went right here. So now we know five is the minimum. And we're going to go left here. So we know seven is the maximum. And now we know that our value has to be between five and seven. And so we just have to check whether it's between five and seven. And it's really pretty straightforward. So Without further ado, let's go ahead and hopefully that makes pretty intuitive sense and let's go ahead and start implementing this. So we're gonna have a private node class for our tree. And that's just gonna have a value, private int value. And then it's gonna have a right node and a left node, right? So private node right and left and that's going to be it for our node it's a pretty simple class and now we're going to do this recursively so we're going to go down we're going to start at the top and sorry let me actually paste this back in here because it'll be helpful to us we're going to start at the top with this five and now we're going to call is binary search tree on the left and on the right and so if all of the children are valid and then the parent is going to be valid right so we're basically using an inductive method to say you know if this subtree here is valid this seven with the six and the eight then as long as seven is as long as this is a valid subtree of five then the whole thing is valid so we're going to go and we're going to do I'm going to create, I'm going to override the, or overload the, this method. So we're going to create a node n. We're going to create a method that just takes in node n. And then we're also going to create a method that takes in the node as well as a minimum and a maximum. And that's how we're going to implement what the algorithm that we were talking about earlier. So we're going to do public Boolean is BST. And then it's going to take in a node n and it's going to take a, a min and an int max like that. So our first method is going to be super easy. We just call the other one. We just call our other method. And so we're going to return is BST. And then we want N is the node. And then remember, we haven't, we just know that we're calling for the whole tree. So there is no minimum or maximum value. So it's just going to be integer dot min int and integer dot max int or min value and max value. So we're going to do integer.min value and in integer.max value. And so we know that that way we're just sort of establishing a baseline and we're searching between like in the range of all integers. So it, you know, it's pretty simple. And now we're doing now for our recursive part of our method we want to make sure we have a base case so if the null is if the node is null then we're going to return true because a null node or a null tree is a valid binary search tree it's an empty binary search tree but it is valid so we're going to say if n equals null then return true and now our next step is we need to check whether our value is between the minimum and the maximum and also, we need to remember here the little tricky business with the fact that if the if it's a left hand child, it can be less it can be less than or equal to the parent node. And if it's a right hand child, it can only be greater. It has to be strictly greater than the parent node. So we're going to say if n is less than min or n is greater than max, then we are returning false. And you can see how this is the case, right? Because if n is less than the minimum, then it means that we went off too far, then we're on a right-hand branch, but we're too far to the left. And if n is greater than the maximum, then it means we're on a right hand, a left-hand branch and we went too far to the right. So this is gonna be fine. And the way we're gonna do it is we're going to actually, so we need to make sure again with the um, parent if it's to the left that the node is can be the same as the parent and so we're going to 
do that by our last part of this is we need to call our um, we need to call this method on the two children, right? So we're gonna do is is bst n dot left, and so the min is just gonna be the min because we're going to the left, and so the minimum doesn't change, and then the max is going to be n dot value. Right, so in this case, we're saying since the max is n dot value, as long as it's not greater than that max, so as long as it's not n dot value plus one or greater, then it's valid. So as if it's equal to n dot value, then that's fine. Right, so n dot value, and we're going to end this with the other sub branch or the other subtree. So we're going to do and is bst n dot right, and then our min is going to be n dot value, and we have to do plus one here because we don't want it to be equal. So n dot value plus one, that's going to ensure that if our number is n dot value or less, then it's not going to be valid. And finally, we have max, just like that, and that's all there is to it. So it's might you might need to go through this line by line and think about what I'm doing because it's a little bit complicated and you sort of need to think about it and it would be helpful if I could draw it out but unfortunately I can't given this technology but when you're doing this in an interview it's totally okay to draw pictures and draw the tree out on the board and do lots of different things like that that'll be really helpful for you to think about it so like I did that when I was preparing for this problem and I just sketch out the different nodes like little circles and lines and I think that's really helpful and it's helpful for thinking about how you're going to solve the problem. So now that we did solve the problem we're going to go through and we're going to test it like we usually do and it's going to be kind of a pain because it's recursive but we're going to do it anyway and we're going to have fun doing it. So let's go ahead and we're going to just use this sample tree that we have been using this whole time and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this like dividing line in the middle just says so a little easier to read but so we're going to first we're going to call is bst of node n so node n is five is this node at the top and then we're going to call is bst n integer min value and integer max value so we're going to come down to here to this is bst method and now we're going to say is n null so n is five right now. I'm just going to go ahead and write this here. So n equals five or the node with the value five. And so n is not equal to null and is n greater than is n less than min. Well, min is integer dot min value. So no, it's not. And is n greater than max and n is integer dot max value. So no, it's not. So we're not going to do anything here. And now we're going to return is BST of n dot left min and n value. So let's do that first. So now n equals two, right? So n equals two, and we're going to call this again. So n equals two, min equals integer dot min value, right? And max now equals five. So we're going to say if it's, it's not null, and now n is not less than integer.min value and n is not greater than max, is not greater than 5. So we're going to come down here again and we're going to do the left subtree again. So now n equals 1, min equals integer.min value, max equals 2. And now we're going to come in here, it's not null, and it's not less than min or greater than max. So we're gonna call this one more time, we're gonna call n left, and now n equals null. So we're gonna return true, because that's this first step here, and now we're gonna call the other side, so we're gonna call n, uh, we're gonna call n dot right on this, and n is also null, so we're also gonna return true for that, and we return the for n equals one, we return the and of both of those. So we're going to return true, right? So now we pop back up our stack and now we have to call. So now this, this was true. So 
we're going to now come down and we're going to call the other side from two. So we're gonna call this three. And now we have to go to, it's not null, it's, so in this case, we're gonna say, I guess, we're gonna say n equals three, min equals, and remember now min equals two, because we called uh, n dot value and max equals max, which is five. So max equals five. And so three is between two and three is between two and five. So we're gonna return the is BST of the two children, which are both null, so that's gonna be true, like we did with the one. And now it's gonna return up to two. And now two, we have both values of the two children from two were both valid. So two is gonna be valid. So two is gonna return true, and now we get back up to five. So now we have that is BST of left, of n dot left, so is BST of the whole subtree that, was, that had two at the top is valid. And now we need to do the other side, and I'm not actually gonna go through it because it's exactly the same, but it should be pretty clear that that's gonna be valid in the same way that the first part was valid. And then those are both gonna be true, so we're going to come back and then we're going to have the, the left is valid and the right, is, sorry, the left is valid and the right is valid. And so therefore, the top, is, the top level is gonna be valid, so the tree is valid. And that's what we expect, right? And we can do, why don't we do one more, I'm just gonna do a mini tree, I'm just gonna do one level here, but I'm going to change it so that this is six just so that we can make sure that, because this is a good thing to test, that not only does it return true when the tree is valid, but you also wanna make sure that it returns false when the tree isn't valid. So we're going to go ahead and we have n equals five, and we're gonna call is BST of six, and then min is going to be integer.min value. And then max is going to be five, right? Because it's n dot value. And so now we're gonna to come to here and we're gonna say n is less than min. n is not less than min, but n is greater than max, right? So we're gonna return false. And then by default, we know that since we're anding the two sides together, the overall value is also gonna be false. So we get that it returns false if the tree is invalid, and that's pretty good. And the last thing we need to do is just double check or think about for a second, what is the runtime of this algorithm? And this is a mercifully simple problem to think about in terms of the runtime, because since we're doing this, we're basically doing a depth first search because we're hitting every node once recursively. And so we're hitting each node once. So we're just going to do have a runtime that's proportional to the number of nodes in the tree. So in the end, the runtime is just going to be big O of n. And that's all there is to it, and hopefully that problem went well for you, and best of luck, and I'll see you again soon.